I've got eight bucks and I owe somebody eight bucks. I really don't have anything because I got positive eight for me and negative eight that I owe somebody. I got nothing. Or if I had five tokens and I used the five tokens on a game, I don't have any left. Okay, that's actually how the full elimination thing works, basically. So, for instance, what would the opposite of 12 be? Negative 12. Of negative 27? 27. Okay, a 5? Negative 5. Because when I put them together, they wipe each other out. Okay? That's the first step in understanding how elimination works. Okay? I always got to be able to figure out a way, well, if I want to have this, what's its opposite so they can go and wipe each other out? So, let's take that, though, to what we're doing now with elimination with variables. What's the opposite of 3x? Negative 3x. Okay, what about if the opposite of negative 8x? 8x. Positive or 8x, yes. A 14x? Negative 14x. This is what we actually are going to find when it's time to go and eliminate something. So now, step two of the process. Finding missing numbers to create something. Because sometimes when I add down, the numbers aren't going to cancel right away. So for instance, what do you multiply times 8 to get negative 8? Negative 1. What about 5 to get 5? 1. 3 to get 6? Oh, we're rolling. 5 to get negative 20. Okay. Now, if that's not something that's a strength of yours, if you're trying to sit there and I'm going, okay, I see where maybe you got those first two, but I'm not quite as sure on the next couple, Here's something I want you to think about a little bit. You always can do this the opposite way. If you're not sure what you can multiply by 5 to get to negative 20, you could say, hey, negative 20 divided by 5 and punch it in the calculator, and you can get the number that way. So it's not like if you don't know it off the top of your head, you're like, screw it. It's not the case at all. If I didn't know, if I was sitting there, I'd go 5 times what is negative 20, and I had no clue. One thing I could do is I could take what am I trying to get to, divided by the one number I have, and I can get there that way. So then, let's really start to apply it and bring it home here with our elimination. 1x, because I remember that there's no number in front of a variable, there's a 1 there. 1x times what gets me to negative 2x? Negative 2, because I already have the x. Negative 1y, or negative y times what, would get me to negative 7y. Remember, this is like a negative 1. Think of it just like you're thinking of these up above. Up here, you're like, well, negative 1 times 8 is negative 8. Negative 1 times what is negative 7? 7. seven. Don't let the fact that there's a variable there mess with your head. It's the same thing that you were doing up here that we were kind of whipping through. Okay. 2y times what gives me negative 10y. But just think about the numbers. 2 times what gives me negative 10? Again, when in doubt, divide. What would negative 10 be? divided by 2b. The only way to make this go better is to keep playing with it. Just watch me. You're going to have to kind of get involved because otherwise, what's that? 5. How's it 5? Okay. Negative 5. So 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. This is the thing I've got to be able to play with. And even if it means me sitting here with the calculator and going, okay, I'm not sure. Two times, I don't know, five is less than that negative. And just playing with it. You've got to get used to this more and work with the mental math. Because if you can't, it's going to be problematic for you. I don't want it to be problematic, but I also can't tell you every number to plug in. So if I can do this, figure out opposite to figure out what I want to get. If I can do this, actually multiply a number to get where I'm heading, 
what I can do then is I flip over is actually start doing some of these. The question now becomes, what can I do if I can't just add down? If I add down here, 4 and negative 8 aren't opposites. They don't cancel. 2, excuse me, 2 and 1 aren't opposites. They're not going to cancel. So, what we've been doing, or had been doing for the past couple of days, is saying, okay, if I've got a variable somewhere that just has a 1 in front of it, or I don't see a variable at all, here's the question that you're actually being asked at this point. If I take these two, here's what I'm asking you. First thing, what's the opposite of a positive 2y? Negative 2y. Okay? So now, once I know that, my next question becomes 1 times what gets me to negative 2? Because what I need for these to be opposites, this 2y, and then of course I want that to be negative 2y, because so that's the opposite, I need to know what I have to multiply my number by to get what I want. So 1 times what gets me to negative 2? Negative 2. So whatever I multiply by, is what I have to multiply this whole, oops, this whole equation by. But I always have to ask myself these two questions first. What's the opposite of this other value? And then how do I get there? So by doing this, here's how this works. I leave this one alone. But down here, I'm going to distribute that negative 2, I'm going to multiply that negative 2 all the way through that equation. And again, if multiplication isn't your deal, going to a calculator is nothing comparable here. Negative 2 times negative 8 is positive 16. I don't want to lose my x, though. Negative 2 times positive 1 is a negative 2y. Okay, that's what I figured out I needed. That was my opposite, because then the y's are going to cancel each other out. That's a good thing. And then negative 2 and negative 3 have to six. So my goal, which was to get rid of the one of the variables, I did. I found the opposite I wanted. I multiplied by the number to get there. And now I can just add down. 4x's and 16 more give me 20. Negative 6 plus 6 is 0. That's okay. And what's my one last step? Divide by 20. So there is a little bit of a thought process involved in this at the start. Now I'm not quite done. The last part is to plug this back in. And I've just been using the top equation. So if I look at that top equation, and I say, okay, no, it can be either. You'll get the same exact answer. So if you look, sometimes you say, that bottom one looks easier. Go ahead and use it. So since this is x is 0, I'm going to plug that 0 in where the x is at. It doesn't get rid of the 4. So here... What's anything times 0 equal? 0. Okay, so that basically just wipes that out. That went away. So I've got one step left, and I'm going to have my y, and I'm going to be done with this thing. What's my one step to get that 2 away from my y? Divide by 2. And I'm done. Now, Here's one thing a couple of you found out on the assignment Friday that you hadn't seen before, but I think some of you are going to look at and go, oh, that really isn't too bad. 
Let's move down to the one below it instead of going to the side here on this first one. Now I look at this one and you're like, wait a minute, Hardy. We haven't talked about this much before. There's numbers in front of every one of those variable terms. There's no just plain old X or plain old Y. So how the heck am I supposed to deal with that? The same way that we were dealing with it before. So here's my question. Can I multiply 2 times something and end up with 6? Yeah. So if I'm looking at my x's, 2 times what gets me to 6? What do I multiply 2 by to get to 6? 3. You're like, okay, so where does that come in handy? Well, let me ask you something. What's the opposite of negative 6x? 6x. I want this right here to become 6x. Well, how did I do that? What's well, 2? If I want it to be 6, so I have 2x. If I want it to become 6x, I times it by 3. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to multiply this equation by 3. The whole thing. Every last part. So, when I do that, got 6x, 3 times 5 is 15. Ooh, now we're getting big. 3 times 21 is 63. But I leave the other one alone. Because what happens now when I add down? The x's disappear. So, 15 plus negative 7 is going to be 8. 63 minus 23 is 40. Yep. One, yeah, because once I get once I get one of my variables set, so when I add down, one of them wipes out. That's when I'm ready to go, and I can just add down. And then I got my one step, which is always that same one step I've got to do. Divide by the number in front of my variable, and I get my answer. And just like we've been doing, it doesn't matter which equation I plug into. So let's say I decide here for my last part, I'm going to use the top equation here again. And I say, okay, I know what this y value is. So it goes where the y is at. Two x plus 5y okay, so all I'm doing is taking my value and literally putting it in because I just want to be able to figure out what x is going to be so 5 times 5 is 25 and now I just do my two-step equation, so I want to get the x term alone first. And I'm going to knock this out. So you're like, so really when there's elimination, there's like three different types. There's where I can just add down to start where there's something with an x that I can just multiply the number and just do it, 
And then there's these other ones where I gotta think a little bit. I've got one last one I wanna show you. Because again, this is something you can actually use on the quiz. And then we'll jump into some of the ones trying to help you with the actual work. The last one over here, I just want to make sure you don't think that every time it's going to be X that we're dealing with. Because here's how you kind of, here's the mental process we're going to work through. You always look at the smaller number when you're looking at a pair of numbers. Because here's the question. Can I times 3 by something and get negative 5, a whole number? Can I use 3 times some whole number and get... Five. No. So I can't do the x's this time. Can I multiply three by some number and get to six? Yes. What do you multiply three by to get to six? Two. So the one with the smaller number, I'm going to multiply by. All the way through. Let's see, 2 times 3 is 6, 2 times negative 3 is negative 6, 2 times negative 6 is negative 12. And then I just leave the 1 on the bottom alone. Because what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've canceled out The sixes in this case, the negative and the positive, six y cancel, they're opposites. And now I just add down. Six and negative five is one. Negative twelve plus twelve is zero. Hey, that one's already done. But they all work that way. And then again, my last part, you can pick whichever one you want, but I just keep using the top one. I know what my x value is, so I plug it in where the x is at. Yeah, whatever, whether this is x or y, you just find whatever it is and you're going to plug that in. You're going to replace it. Yep, that's never going to change. That's the nice thing about this. There's not a whole lot of things that are going to be different. It's just getting used to it. So like here, we said before, anything times zero is zero. So basically, that's just gone. It's not even there. And then I got one step left to get the y by itself. Now, again, like I've mentioned before, this is a note sheet that you can use. If you haven't been, because some of you I know think that, well, it's easier when I'm talking through all steps. And that, that may be true. But when you're doing homework on your own or when you're doing a quiz, I'm not going to be standing here talking the entire time. So it's one of those things that we've got to find one of these sheets or some way to make a connection between you looking at this and remembering what I'm talking about or, which I'm going to show you here in a minute, looking at the website to try and figure out, you know, what's going on with these. So again, this is notes. Okay, like it says up at the top here, tuck this one where you can find it. This is something you'll be able to use on Wednesday as well. What I'm going to do for just a moment before I help with the homework,